Hello, Miss Bacon, Harvey Ream, and all who have come to listen to the next portion of our daily bread from the Torah of Yahweh. I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am. Before we start, let's bow our hearts and pitch this tent with Abba Yahweh Elohim. Most beloved Abba Yahweh, we come before you to worship and praise you and to thank you, Father, for this day and every day you make for us to live in. Thank you for bringing us here to share in your word. And please open up our eyes, our ears and our hearts to see, hear and understand the truths you reveal to us within this book. I pray most humbly that you grow in us the desire to know you more and more each day through Yeshua in Yahweh, our Kodesh Elohim, Yahweh Echad. Amen. Okay, so I've left up the glossary of words and I've left up the pronunciation guide and today we're going to be covering the rest of the laws for Israel, Israel and false mighty ones and idols. Thank you for joining me. Let's begin. Two or three witnesses, Deuteronomy 19.15 One witness does not rise up against a man concerning any wickedness or any sin that he commits. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses a matter is established. See also Numbers 35.30 in Deuteronomy 17.6. Weights and measures, Deuteronomy 25.13-16. You shall not have in your house differing measures, a large and a small. You shall have a perfect and right weight, a perfect and right measure, so that they prolong your days on the land which Yahweh your Elohim is giving you. For all who do these, and all who do unrighteously, are an abomination to Yahweh, your Elohim. See also Leviticus 19.35-36. to One's own sin. Deuteronomy 24.16 Fathers are not put to death for their children, and children are not put to death for their fathers. Each is to die for his own sin. Judge righteously, Deuteronomy 1, 16 to 17. When hearing between your brothers, judge righteously between a man and his brother or a stranger who is with him. Do not show partiality in right ruling. Hear the small as well as the great. Do not be afraid of anyone's face, for the right ruling belongs to Elohim. And a case which is too hard for you, bring it to me and I shall hear it. See also Exodus 23, 2-3 and 23, 7 and Leviticus 19, 15. Justice for the poor, Exodus 23, 6. Do not turn aside the right ruling of your poor in his strife. See also Leviticus 19.15 and Deuteronomy 24.17. Strangers, father, fatherless and widows. Deuteronomy 24.17. Do not twist the right ruling of a stranger or the fatherless nor, fatherless, nor take the garment of a widow. Difficult judgment, Deuteronomy 17.8-11. When any matter arises which is too hard for you to judge between blood and blood, between plea and plea, or between stroke and stroke, matters of strife within your gates, then you shall rise and go up to the place which Yahweh your Elohim chooses. You shall come to the Kohenim, the Levites, and to the judge who is in those days and shall inquire and they shall declare to you the word of right ruling and you shall do according to the word which they declare to you from that place which Yahweh chooses 
and you shall guard to do according to all that they instruct you. Do according to the Torah, in which they teach you, according to the right ruling which they say to you. And do not turn to the right or the left from the word which they declare to you. Bribery, Deuteronomy 16 to 19. Do not distort right ruling. Do not show partiality, nor take a bribe for a bribe. Uh, for a bribe blinds the eyes of the wise and twists the words of the righteous. See also Exodus 23, 8 and Deuteronomy 10, 17. Punishment. Punishment for wickedness, sorry. Deuteronomy 25, 1 to 3. When there is a dispute between men, then they shall come into judgment and they shall be judged and the righteous declared righteous, and the wicked declared wicked. And it shall be, if the wicked is to be beaten, that the judge shall cause him to lie down and be beaten in his presence, with the number of blows according to his wickedness. Forty blows he gives him, but no more, lest he beat him with many more blows than these and your brother be degraded before your eyes. Injury of a fellow man. Exodus 21, 18 to 19. And when men strive together, and one smites the other with a stone, or with the, his fist, and he does not die, but is confined to his bed, if he rises again and walks about outside with his staff, then he who smote him shall be innocent. He only pays for lost time and sees to it that he is completely healed. Injury of a pregnant woman. Exodus twenty one twenty two. And when men strive and they shall smite a pregnant woman and her children come out, yet there is no injury he shall certainly be punished accordingly as the woman's husband lays upon him. And he shall pay by the judges, but if there is injury, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, lash for lash. A rebellious son Deuteronomy 21, 18 to 21. When a man has a wayward and rebellious son who is not listening to the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and who, when they have disciplined him, does not listen to them, when his father and his mother shall take hold of him and bring him out to the elders of the city, to the gate of his city, and shall say to the elders of his city, This son of ours is wayward and rebellious. He is not listening to our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of his city shall stone him to death with stones. Thus you shall purge the evil from your midst. And yet, and let all Yisrael hear and reverse, revere. And let all Yisrael hear and revere. One hanged, Deuteronomy 21, 22 to 23. And when a man has committed a sin worthy of death, then he shall be put to death, and you shall hang him on a tree. Let his body not remain overnight on the tree, for you shall certainly burn him the same day. For he who is hanged is accursed of Elohim so that you do not defile the land which Yahweh your Elohim is giving you as an inheritance. Widows and Orphans Exodus 22, 22-24 Do not afflict any widow or fatherless child. If you do afflict them at all, if they cry out to me at all, 
I shall certainly hear their cry, and my wrath shall burn, and I shall slay you with the sword. Your wives shall be widows, and your children fatherless. See also Deuteronomy 24.17 and Deuteronomy 27.19. Strong words. The elderly. Leviticus 19.32. Rise up before the grey-headed, and you shall favour the face of an old man, and shall revere your Elohim, I am Yahweh. The deaf and blind, Leviticus 19.14 Do not curse the deaf, or put a stumbling block before the blind, but revere your Elohim, I am Yahweh. See also Deuteronomy 27.18 Cursing a ruler, Exodus Twenty-two, twenty-eight. Do not revile Elohim, nor curse a ruler of your people. Okay. Repent and confess sins, Numbers 5, 6 to 7. When a man or a woman commits any sins that men commit in trespass against Yahweh, and that being is guilty, then they shall confess their sin which they have done, and he shall restore his guilt in its principle, plus one-fifth of it, and give it to whom he has been guilty. See also Leviticus 5, 5 and 26, 40. The Mikdash. Leviticus 19, 30. Guard my Shabbatoth, and reverence my Mikdash. I am Yahweh. See also Leviticus. Leviticus 26 2 Lost Possessions Exodus 22 9 For every matter of transgression for ox, for donkey, for sheep, for garment, or for whatever is lost, which another claims to be his, let the matter of them both come before Elohim. And whomever Elohim declares wrong repays double to his neighbour. Borrowing and Hiring Exodus twenty two fourteen to fifteen and when a man borrows from his neighbour and it is injured or dies while the owner of it is not present, he shall certainly repay, but if its owner was with it, he does not repay. If it was hired, he is entitled to the hire. Lending of interest, Deuteronomy 19 and 20. Do not lend at interest to your brother interest of silver, interest of food, or interest of whatever is lent at interest. To a foreigner, you lend at interest. To your brother, you do not lend at interest, so that Yahweh, your Elohim, might baruch you might bless you in all that you put your hand to in the land which you are entering to possess. See also Exodus 22, 25 and Leviticus 25, 35 to 37. Taking a pledge, Deuteronomy 24, 6 and Deuteronomy 24, 1 to 13. Okay. No one takes in pledge the lower or the upper millstone, for he would be taking a life in pledge. When you lend your brother a loan, do not go into his house to get his pledge. Stand outside and let the man to whom you lend, bring the pledge out to you. And if the man is poor, do not sleep with his pledge. By all means, return the pledge to him at sundown, and he shall sleep in his own garment, and shall baruch you. And it shall be righteousness to you before Yahweh your Elohim. See also Exodus 22, 26-27. Seventh year release, Deuteronomy 15, 1 to 3. And the end of every seven years. 
seventh year release. So at the end of every seven years, you make a release of debts. And this is the word of the release. Every creditor is to release what he has loaned to his neighbour. He does not require it of his neighbour or his brother because it is called the release of Yahuwah. Of a foreigner you could require it. But your hand is to release whatever is owed by your brother. See also Exodus 21 2 and Deuteronomy 15 12 and Deuteronomy 31 10. The poor, Deuteronomy 15 7 to 11. When there is a poor man with you, one of your brothers, within any of the gates in your land which Yahweh your Elohim is giving you, do not harden your heart, nor shut your hand from your poor brother. For you shall certainly open your hand to him and certainly lend him enough for his need, whatever he needs, be on guard lest there be a thought of Beli Ya'al in your heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release, is near, and your eye is evil against the poor brother, and you give him knelt, and he shall cry out to Yahuwah against you, and it shall be a sin in you. You shall certainly give to him, and your heart should not be grieved, when you give to him, because for this reason Yahweh your Elohim, Baruch you in all your works, and in all to which you put your hand. Because the poor one does not seize from the land, therefore I am commanding you, saying, You shall certainly open your hand to your brother, to your poor, and to your needy one in your land. See also Leviticus 25, 35-37, Foraging, Deuteronomy 23, 24 and 25. So, chapter 23, verse 24 and 25. When you come into your neighbour's vineyard, you shall eat to the satisfaction of your desire, but do, no, do not put any in a receptacle of yours, when you come into your neighbour's standing grain, you shall pluck the heads with your hand, but do not use a sickle on your neighbour's standing grain. Okay, different materials. Deuteronomy 21.11 Do not put on a garment of different kinds, of wool and linen together. See also Leviticus 19.19 19. Protection from accident. Deuteronomy 22.8 When you build a new house, then you shall make a parapet for your roof, so that you do not bring blood guilt on your house when one falls from it. Ooh, interesting. That's the end of that section, Laws for Israel. So now we're on false mighty ones and idols. So making idols, Exodus 20, verse 5. You do not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of that which is in the Shamayim above or which is in the earth beneath or which is in the waters under the earth. See also Exodus 34, 17, Leviticus 19, 14 and Leviticus 26, 1. Deuteronomy 4.16 and Deuteronomy 5.8, Deuteronomy 9.12, Deuteronomy 9.16 and Deuteronomy 27.15. Okay. Bowing down to idols, Exodus 25. So 20, verse 5. You do not bow down to them nor serve them, for I, Yahweh, your Elohim, am a jealous Ao visiting the wickedness of the fathers on the children 
to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me. See also Exodus 34, 14, Leviticus 26, 1 and Deuteronomy 5, 9 and Deuteronomy 11, 16. Turning to idols, Leviticus 19, 4. Do not turn to idols and do not make yourselves, for yourselves, moulded mighty ones. I am Yahweh, your Elohim. See also Exodus 20, verse 4 and 5. Leviticus 26, verse 1. Deuteronomy, these lot are all in Deuteronomy. Um, chapter 4, 15 to 23. Chapter 5, 8 to 9. Chapter 6, Verse 14, chapter 8, verse 19, I think, and chapter 11, verse 16. Oh, and verse 12. Oh no, that's chapter 12, verse 30 and 31. Okay, these little um, semicolons are very small for my eyesight, even with glasses, so apologies. Um, altars and pillars of false mighty ones, Deuteronomy 7, verse 5. But this is what you do to them. Break down their altars and destroy their pillars and cut down their asherim and burn their carved images with fire. See also Exodus 32, 20, 34, 13. And Numbers 33, 51 to 52, and Deuteronomy 7, 5, 7, 25, 9, 21, and 12, 2 to 3. Idols in your house, Deuteronomy 7, 26. And do not bring an abomination into your house, lest you be accursed like it, utterly loathe it, and utterly hate it, for it is accursed. Names of false mighty ones, Exodus 23, 13. And in all that I have said to you, take heed, and make no mention of the name of other mighty ones. Let it not be heard from your mouth. Okay. One who serves false mighty ones. Deuteronomy thirteen six to 11 When your brother, the son of your mother, or your son, or your daughter, or the wife of your bosom, or your friend who is in your own being entices you secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other mighty ones, which you have not known, neither you nor your fathers of the mighty ones of the people which are all around you, near to you or far from you, from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth, do not agree with him or listen to him, nor shall your eye pardon him, nor spare him or conceal him, but you shall certainly kill him. Your hand is first against him to put him to death, and afterward the hand of all the people, and you shall stone him with stones until he dies, because he sought to entice you away from Yahweh your Elohim who brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim from the house of bondage. And let all Israel hear and revere and not again do any such evil matter as this is, as this in your midst. See also Deuteronomy 13, 1 to 3. So a city that has turned to idols, Deuteronomy thirteen twelve to 16. When you hear someone in one of your cities, which Yahweh your Elohim gives you to dwell in, saying, Some men, some of Beli Ya'al, have gone out of your midst and led the inhabitants of their cities astray, saying, Let us go and serve other mighty ones, which you have not known, then you shall inquire, search out, and ask diligently, and see if the matter is true and established, that this abomination was one in your midst, 
you shall certainly smite the inhabitants of that city with the edge of the sword, putting it under the ban. And all that is in it and its livestock with the edge of the sword and gather all its plunder into the middle of the sheet of the street sorry completely burn with fire the city and all its plunder before Yahweh your Elohim and it shall be a heap forever never to be built again very interesting a false prophet Deuteronomy 18.20 The Navi who presumes to speak a word in my name which I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other mighty ones even that Navi shall die. Signs and wonders Deuteronomy 13 1 to 3 and 5 When there arises among you a Navi or a dreamer of dreams, and he shall give you a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder shall come true, of which he has spoken to you, saying, Let us go after other mighty ones, which you have not known, and serve them. Do not listen to the words of that Navi or that dreamer of dreams, for Yahweh your Elohim is trying you to know whether you love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart and with all your being. And that Navi or that dreamer of dreams is put to death because he has spoken apostasy against Yahweh your Elohim. See also Deuteronomy 18 verse 22. The laws of other nations. Leviticus 20:23. 20, and do not walk in the laws of the nation which I am driving out before you. Before they do all these, I therefore, and therefore I loathe them. For they do all these, and therefore I loathe them. See also Leviticus 18.3 and 18.27 and 18.30 and Deuteronomy 20.30-31. 20, Slaughtering of false mighty ones. Slaughtering two false mighty ones exodus twenty two twenty he who slaughters to a mighty one except to Yahweh only is put under the ban see also numbers twenty five two to four offering your children to false mighty ones Leviticus twenty two to five any man of the children of Israel or of the strangers who sojourn in Israel, who gives any of his offspring to Molech, shall certainly be put to death. The people of the land shall stone him with stones, and I, I shall turn my face against that man, and shall cut him off from the midst of the, his people, because he has given of his offspring to Molech, So as to defile my Mikdash and to profane my Kodesh name. And if the people of the land at all hide their eyes from the man, as he gives any of his offspring to Molech, and they do not kill him, then I shall turn my face against that man and against his clan, and shall cut him off, and all who go whoring after him even go whoring after Molech, Molech, from the midst of their people. See also Leviticus 18.21, Deuteronomy 12.31 and Deuteronomy 18.10. So planting a tree for worship, stroke pillars. Deuteronomy 16.21. Do not plant for yourselves any tree as an asherah, 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 near the altar of Yahweh, your Elohim, that you make for yourself. And do not put up a pillar which Yahweh, your Elohim, hates. See also Deuteronomy 18, 
Deuteronomy 16, 21. Okay. Well, that brings us up to sexual defilement. And I don't want to... Okay. Well, that brings us up to sexual defilements. And I don't want to... I want to read that one on its own. <laughs> Away from anything else. I hope you understand where I'm coming from there. But thank you, dearest Father, for all these rules and putting us straight as to who they're for and for what what they apply to, who they apply to, when they apply. Thank you very much. Oh, we offer up our life to you, Father, but we want to serve you with all of our heart and all of our life. We don't know how. We're miles away from where it all started. You know best, and we trust you to guide us in our heart. The understanding of our heart is what brings us closer to you. So please wash and bathe us every single day of our life. Hold our hands and walk us every step of the way towards you. And thank you for opening up our eyes, our ears and our mind. And to your understanding your word. And thank you for preserving these words all this time underneath the mud to come out now. Thank you for having us live in a time where I feel so privileged to hear your word like this, like we've never heard it before. Thank you, Father, for loving us so much that you don't let us out of your sight. <sighs> Please bring us home safely. We patiently await our adone with much anticipation and much hope to come home to you, Father, and live with you forever in spirit with new bodies that you preserve for us. Thank you for everything. Through Yeshua, our Adon, your Yahid, I pray, in Yahweh, Yahweh, our Kodesh Elohim, Yahweh Echad, Amen. Onward and upward to everybody who came here. I hope you were being lifted up by the word of Yahweh every day. I hope to see you here for the next reading. Thank you for joining me and thank you for being interested. Through Yeshua, in Yahweh, may you breathe every breath you take. Amen. Shalom, much have, many berakhoth to all of you.